Well, last night at Daytona International Speedway, we had some great racing, a lot of scary incidents, and a crazy finish that left me completely heartbroken. Let's talk about Daytona Under the Lights. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle, the self-proclaimed king of Rowdy Nation, aka Racing Boy Short, and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. What a race, what a race we had at Daytona. We didn't have as much fuel saving as I expected going in, which made me happy. Overall, a very entertaining race and we didn't have any rain that's kind of one of the first things i want to say we didn't have rain affect a daytona race that is awesome there was a chance of rain throughout the evening but the rain never came at daytona international and they got the whole entire race in under the lights and like i said at the top it was very very entertaining we saw great racing Throughout the day, some great racing in stage one. Stage two, we saw a little bit more of the strategy with the fuel saving. But we also saw some great racing there too. But we also saw a lot of scary incidents tonight. Well, not tonight. Last night at Daytona International. If any of you saw my preview video, one of the big things coming into this race was the discussion around the bubble. Well... The bubble got even more interesting here today, especially with the finish, which a lot of you know what happens at the finish, but we'll get to that at the end in all my heartbreak. But it seemed like the three primary bubble boys, that being Busher, Bubba, and Ross Chastain, had issues throughout the night, all three of them getting heavily involved in some big incidents throughout the evening. So watching the bubble boys tracking where they are, the overall racing throughout the night, the little bits of strategy here and there. Everything was pretty fantastic. The wrecks were insane. Like I said, we had some scary incidents. The two most notable, we'll go through the first one, that being Michael McDowell almost flipping in turns one and two. A very scary incident here. It looks like the impact from Joey Logano and the quick switch in air just lifted Michael McDowell's number 34 and just was like, just like that half almost flip throughout the corner. Ended up, la ended up, la ended up landing back on his tires, thankfully enough. But we had three big incidents, I'd say, because we had the big one, the first big one where I don't think there was any too nasty hits, but took out a lot of great cars. I think you had Tyler Reddick, who ended up coming back later on in the race. Ross Chastain being the no most notable out of that first big one. Then we had the second big accident that I was just going over with Michael McDowell, and that took out a lot of cars as well. And then the third incident that I really want to talk about, the second really nasty, scary incident was one of the scariest incidents I've probably ever seen in the Cup Series. And that was Josh Berry flipping and then just sliding like a sled into the inside wall and destroying the front of his car. A very nasty incident. Luckily enough, Josh Berry got out okay. With incidents like this nowadays, it looks like most of the time drivers just end up with a couple of bruises. Of course, you had Ryan Priest's eye injuries last year with all those tumbles he took at this exact same track of Daytona International. But in different eras of cars, I don't think Josh Berry would have made it out of this. This was a very scary incident, had a lot of speed flying into the inside wall. And of course, with no tires on the ground, the inability to use the brakes not exactly sure how fast he was going when he hit that inside wall but it was very fast and this is the one i kind of want to talk about a little bit more just because of how severe the incident was and i'm I, I think i also have kind of a different take than what i'm hearing from a lot of people i don't really hear a lot of people talking about it i hear a lot of people talking about how strong 
the roof is and how great that is. And I, I admit that that is a great thing. We don't want the roof caving in on our drivers. That is just one thing we do not want. But one of, and maybe the only con from that was the fact he went into that inside wall so fast. Because if that roof began to break down just a little bit, just a little bit, he wouldn't have went flying into the wall at that speed. I'm not saying change the roof. That's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just pointing out that is why he hit the wall that fast. It's probably the only con of having such a strong, nice roof because they showed the roof after the after the wreck. The roof just pretty much tore off the wrap. The metal wasn't even really wasn't bent or anything it was fine there was nothing wrong with it but that is the I'd, I'd say that's probably the only con of having such a strong roof is when you land on your roof like Josh Berry did like Corey LaJoy did last week you're not going to slow down at all you're just going to go flying to wherever you're going you're going to go flying into the wall flying into the grass or something like that and that's just what happens because he was flying into that wall looked like a sled going downhill and i'm not sure what you can do about this like i said i don't i'm not suggesting to change the roof because i don't want the roof caving in i rather have this than the roof caving in but i would like for nascar to maybe figure out a figure out a way i don't know how they would do it maybe a different material on top of the car or something to slow these cars down when they land on their roof like that because they just slide like a sled they they're moving like a top it's it's pretty crazy how fast barry was able to go on his roof all right now let's get to the end of this race because of all these gnarly incidents that we had it pretty much set up the very end of this race and a lot of drivers up near the front who have either never won a race before haven't won in a long time, looking to lock themselves a playoff spot. You had Kyle Busch up there. You had Harrison Burton. You had Parker Retzloff. You had Cody Ware. You had all these different drivers that you would never, ever see at the front competing for the win at Daytona. Very interesting last few laps we had at Daytona. But one of the big contenders that you expect to see quick Every week that was up near the front at the end of this thing was actually Christopher Bell, who was pretty quiet throughout the day and was even quiet kind of on the end of this race. So it ends up being set up where we do a green, white, checkered finish. Kyle Busch picks the low side, being followed by Christopher Bell. Then the high side will be Harrison Burton being followed by Parker Retzloff. I was saying on the pace lap leading up to the choose, whoever is in front of Bell, I believe, is going to win this race because of how difficult it is to just jump out and make a pass. Right when you jump out, you immediately slow down in this car. It's just so, it's a lot more difficult to make a pass in this car than prior generations of cars. So I just believed whoever was on that front row was going to win that race. And at that point, I was just hoping I'd be right being a Rowdy fan. And it looked like Kyle Busch had it in a very good position. But then coming down the back straightaway on the final lap, something happened that I did not see coming. Parker Retzloff, very inexperienced in the Cup Series. A young race car driver. He's, I like Parker Retzloff quite a bit. I've actually, out of every NASCAR driver, he's probably the one I've conversated with the most most on high racing so i i like the guy but it made me so upset to see him give such an amazing push parker retzloff gave one of the best pushes i've seen at daytona and talladega especially for someone who's as inexperienced as he is gives a winning push to harrison burton down the back straightaway harrison burton harry b clears kyle bush in three and four and would go on to get his first career victory at daytona international speedway a very wonderful moment for harrison burton for his family his fiance was there 
his parents, Kim and Jeff Burton. Jeff Burton in the booth making the call. This punch in the booth for how hyped Jeff Burton is has been going viral the last the last 12 hours. An amazing moment for Harrison Burton who doesn't know what his future is. He doesn't know where he's going next year as Josh Berry will be driving the Wood Brothers number 21. Harrison Burton doesn't know where he goes, but he also just got the Wood Brothers 100th win in the Cup Series. A very big moment for the race team, for Harrison Burton, for the Burton family, and we'll have to see where Harry B ends up next year. Does he end up back in the Cup Series? Does he go back to Xfinity or Trucks? We don't know yet, but either way, he will go down in the history books as a Cup Series winner, getting his first career victory at Daytona under the lights. Which leads me to my next thing. Kyle Busch gets second place. Damn it. Oh my gosh. We were so close. We were so close. Rowdy Nation. I'm speaking directly to Rowdy Nation right now. Heartbreak. Complete and utter heartbreak. That was awful to see. I was very confident coming off turn two that Kyle Busch had it in the bag because Harrison Burton had Parker Retzloff behind him. Um, I did doubt Parker, especially with Parker having the same engine as, as Rowdy. I didn't think he would push Harrison. If anything, I thought he'd make it three wide. Very disappointing. I was going to make a reaction video to the finish, and last second I was like, no, I'm not going to make one, and I'm glad I didn't because you would have just seen a man standing up, jumping up, and then right when he crossed the finish line, I just put my head down in my hands. Just heartbreak for Kyle Busch, for me, for Rowdy Nation, Kyle Busch fans everywhere. Very disappointing. Not sure if he'll end up getting a victory this year. He has 11 races left. To get a victory on the year, he needs to win the Southern 500 next week at Darlington Raceway, the lady in black, if he wants to get himself into the playoffs, which is definitely possible. Kyle Busch is very good at Darlington. He almost won there a couple of years ago before he had his engine issues. He won there back in the day in that beautiful M&M's Indiana Jones Toyota. Hopefully Kyle Busch can get back to victory lane next week. And lock up a playoff spot. Rowdy Nation, we are we are grieving right now on last night's finish. But speaking of playoff spots, Harrison Burton did lock up a playoff spot. And that's been a big conversation point as well over the last 12 hours. Is Harrison Burton's outside of the top 30 in points. Of course, that is not... The rule anymore, there was a rule in place where you had to be in the top 30 in Cup Series points to be part of the win and your end system. Now at this point, as long as you're competing for the championship and you've run all the races, doesn't matter. If you win, you're in. Harrison Burton was 34th in points and now he's in the top 16 in points. Congratulations to Harrison Burton. He he didn't break any rules, and he, he makes the playoffs fairly, but at the same time, as a purist, I don't like seeing him in the playoffs because he has been awful this season, but like I said, he didn't break any rules. He earned his spot into the playoffs, and this might make NASCAR think twice about the top 30 rule. When they removed that top 30 rule, I ultimately thought they were going to move it to the top 25 in points, and they ended up just taking the rule away in general. They need to put it back and maybe to top 25, like I'm saying. But that, that being said, congratulations to Harrison Burton, to the Wood Brothers. Like I said, they earned their spot into the playoffs by the rules. Good for them. Harry B gets his first victory in the Cup Series. All right, Harry B has locked up his spot in the playoffs. 13 drivers in the playoffs have locked up 
their spot by getting a win, which means there's three spots available on points, and there's five drivers that are capable of making it happen on points. 14th in points is pretty much a lockup to make it to the playoffs, and that is Martin Truex Jr., who is 58 points above the cut line. I'd say Truex would be in some real danger if he has a bad race, like he wrecks out, finishes outside the top 30, and we get a new winner. So I say if he finishes outside the top 30 and we get a new winner, Truex will probably be out at that point. Other than that, I find it really unlikely that he misses the playoffs. Then we go to 15th in points, and Ty Gibbs had a very safe, smart race at Daytona, just kept himself out of trouble for the most part, ended up exiting Daytona 39 points above the cut line, not super secure, especially if we get a new winner. But as long as he gets like a top 20 and we don't get a new winner, anything like that, Ty Gibbs should be in the Cup Series playoffs. Then the next three spots, I think, get a lot more interesting. Currently on the bubble, a driver that has came close to winning a couple races this season and had a lot of issues at Daytona, along with the next two drivers I'm going to be naming. But the driver I'm talking about right now, 21 points above the cut line, is Chris Busher. Of course, one of those races he almost won earlier on in the year was at Darlington. So it's a good track for Busher as long as he can keep it safe and have do well in the stages. He should be good. A new winner would screw him out of the top 16 though. The first driver on the outside, 21 points outside of the playoffs in 17th spot is Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace looked really strong at Daytona, but unfortunately had some issues getting involved in some incidents late at Daytona along with Chris Buescher and Ross Chastain. Darlington, I wouldn't say, is one of the best tracks for Bubba Wallace. So he's going to have to really figure something out, going to have to work really hard with Denny Hamlin and Tyler Reddick all week because both of those drivers are very good at Darlington, especially Denny Hamlin. So we'll have to see what Bubba's, able, what Bubba's able to figure out this week heading into the Southern 500. And then the last driver that can make it in on points, 27 points outside the cut line, that being the driver of the number one, Ross Chastain. Of course, a year and a half ago, Ross Chastain came really close to winning this race, was battling with Kyle Larson near the end of the event, ended up wrecking himself, and Kyle Larson in turns one and two. Since then, we have not seen as much speed out of the Melon Man, so we'll have to see what he's able to do next week. But this is a very interesting bubble we have. I'd say there's three drivers that are in high-pressure situations, that being Chris Buescher, Bubba Wallace, and Ross Chastain, but Martin Truex Jr. and Ty Gibbs need to be very, very aware if we get a new winner that they could potentially be on the chopping block as well. And before we send it out, let's update the regular season championship battle. I don't think this gets talked about enough for some reason, but it's a very big deal. You get a bunch of playoff points for winning the championship of the regular season. So the three drivers that will be competing for those 15 playoff points will be Tyler Reddick, who is your current points leader, who is 17 points above Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson looking to get maybe a victory at Darlington. Both of these drivers very strong at Darlington. And then third in points, 18 points behind Tyler Reddick, only one behind his teammate of Kyle Larson is Chase Elliott. All three of these drivers are actually pretty strong at Darlington Raceway. We'll have to see what happens in the stages, but these drivers are going to be fighting really hard for stage points and to get the best finish they can possible. But Reddick is sitting in a great position as long as he runs how Reddick is expected to run, and that is top 10 
top five throughout the day and get a top 10, top five finish, he should get the regular season title unless someone like Larson or Chase Elliott go out there and dominate the whole race. So we'll have to see who is able to get this regular season title. And I would like to make a note, the fourth driver that was part of this championship battle a week ago, Denny Hamlin, after his points penalty last week and after all the issues that he had at Daytona, he is now over 100 points behind the points lead and an eighth. That is crazy. Probably one of the worst weeks Denny Hamlin has had of his whole career. All right, but give me your thoughts down below on what did you think about the race at Daytona, Harrison Burton's win, the Kyle Busch heartbreak. Also, what do you think about the bubble battle and the regular season championship battle? Who makes it to the playoffs? Who wins the regular season title? Do we maybe even get another new winner next week in the Southern 500? I'm looking at you, Eric Jones. Also, if you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week, but that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.